Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for clicking on another video. I'm so, so excited to come back and do this video for you this year. Last year I did my very first charcuterie slash grazing table at my mom's house for Thanksgiving and this year I'm doing it again in our new house. I'm so excited to actually transform our pool table into the table for the charcuterie. So stay tuned, I'm going to do a lot of um, editing to this video so that way it's not so long. This process is probably gonna take me a few hours. It's going to be very large and I'm gonna first start with working on the setup. I'm going to do some draping and some fabric and some different tiered levels so that way it just makes the whole presentation more intriguing. I'm not going to be talking throughout the video to save on time, so I'll do sped up versions so you can actually see what I'm doing and then I will narrate over the video. Thank you so, so much for watching. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, I started off with some random shaped boxes, different levels, different tiers. Uh, just boxes that I had lying around. Doesn't have to be anything fancy because they're gonna be covered up. So as you can see, I just have some packing boxes and some old wicker boxes. And I'm using a super cheap cloth that I found in the wedding section at Walmart. It was maybe $3 and it's like a faux fabric. It's like a really, really thick napkin. And I'm just putting this down as the base so that way I have a nice white cover underneath where the fabric's going to be placed. At our Walmart, they actually have pre-cut pieces of fabric and it's always more affordable to do it this way rather than having them cut it off of the spool for you. So I found some beige fabric and I believe this was three yards. And it was literally the perfect size. All I'm doing is I'm just fanning it all out, tucking it in between the boxes so you can see the different levels and different elements of what's underneath. And I covered all of the cheap fabric that was hiding underneath. And this is a really easy way to make your presentation look so, so fancy. So I'm taking a sheer white fabric and a sheer black fabric, and I'm going to just drape those on different tiers and in between some of the boxes. So that way you can see the difference in color and it just adds some more texture and it just makes it look super fancy. It probably cost me about $20 in total between the tablecloth and the different fabrics, but I'd say it was definitely worth it. In last year's video, I kept things more simple. I used a butcher butcher block paper and a simple cutting board. So if you would like to see my first video, then you can definitely click on that. I'll put the link in the description and you can see how far I've come in a year. So next I'm taking a big bunch of eucalyptus. Eucalyptus is said to um, deter flies. So I wanted to make sure I had a bunch of that right as the focal point of the charcuterie. So you always wanna keep in mind that you can really make things decorative by incorporating different elements such as cut flowers, dry flowers, things like that. And now I'm just laying down a couple of cutting boards just to get an idea of what it's gonna look like. Now I am taking several different size containers that I purchased from the Dollar Tree everything's a dollar and it comes in multiple sets i'm showing you here how i'm sanitizing and washing each container my video last year a lot of people had something to say about me not washing the containers but what you don't see is that they are completely wrapped but for everyone's peace of mind i am showing here how i sanitize and get everything ready for the charcuterie i'm going to use these containers to um, store all the different nuts and um, candied bacon and fun stuff like that to wash my berries and fruit in a apple cider and water mixture. This will actually help to kill off any little buggies or any little bacteria. Um, it also removes excess dirt. You can kind of see in the water, it's all floating around there. Gross. So I've let this sit in here for about five minutes and I'm going to take them out and put them on a towel to dry. Now I'm taking um, some serving platters that I had already, as well as a few that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Um, this is a plastic platter. I love how they're getting so fancy and making them look like real silver. I also bought some plastic tongs. You can see me washing them here, even though they were completely bagged. Now I'm taking some cherries, some grapes, some, I'm pretty much getting all the fruit variety for you. Now what I like to do with my grapes is, and you will see this in a minute, 
I'm just washing everything and now I'm taking a scissor and I'm cutting them into individual portions. This makes it super easy for anyone trying to grab off of the charcuterie without having to touch the grapes. They could just grab a little piece, a little bundle with the tongs. And I have a huge towel that's next to me and you can see that here. And I just place everything on the towel, cover it with paper towel, and then I wrap the towel over it so that way there's no flies or dust getting on your fruit after you've washed it. Now I'm pulling out all of my pre-cut fruit. I like to do this because it's affordable and it's already portioned out and it's pretty much halfway done. All I do at this point is I cut the fruit down into bite-sized pieces, making it more presentable and easier to grab. And it's just easier when it's in a bite-sized portion, but it really does stretch your fruit. This is not even half of a watermelon, maybe half of a cantaloupe here. And I only bought one package per per charcuterie so this is definitely something that i recommend it makes your job so much easier and makes things go a lot faster now obviously this is open pre-cut fruit so i'm going to wrap this in foil when i'm done and put this back in the fridge until it's time to serve and you can see here i cut the can open little little bite-sized pieces and to save on time i just stacked all of them and i'm cutting multiples at once and this will save you a lot of time as well now with charcuterie, it's very important to keep in mind that it can only be out for two to three hours max. So whatever you can keep refrigerated up until the time of assembly is definitely recommended. So what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the cut melon, covering it with foil, popping it back into the fridge so it will be nice and cool until it's time to serve. Now pineapple is extremely acidic and juicy, so I did not want to mix this with my other melons. So what I've done is I've taken a paper towel and a little um, fruit tray, and I'm just cutting up the pineapple into chunks, and I'm placing that on the paper towel to be wrapped in foil and put back into the fridge until it's time to serve. Now I'm getting some of my pre-cut cheeses out. Um, I got this from the deli. This is smoked Gouda and I had them slice it super thick, and I'm just cutting these in half to make half moon shapes. I love to do the own, my own cutting of the cheeses, and that way you have more control of the presentation and how it's going to look in the layout. Now I got this Butterkeist cheese, Colby Jack, roasted garlic. Ooh, that roasted garlic was so good. I love to source all different cheeses from all different stores, so I did get a lot of these from a marketplace. You just wanna be sure that when you're cutting up your cheeses that you do things in different shapes and sizes and textures. That's what's gonna give interest to your charcuterie table. Now with this cheese, I noticed that it was a little bit more on the softer side and the rind was what was holding it together. So I decided to leave this one whole. Now I'm just washing my cutting boards and taking them back out to the display and setting them where they're going to go. Whenever I'm assembling my charcuterie, I always start off with the things that are not refrigerated such as the candies, the nuts, things like that. I did wanna be a little fancy, so I picked up some Ferrero Rocher as well as some white chocolate truffles, and I'm displaying them in a little dollar store dish. I'm also using some of my glass Tupperware dishes um, to display some of the items as well. I bought gourmet caramel popcorn, and it was so, so good. I just love to mix in dessert with my charcuterie because whenever you put away the things that are refrigerated after people have been done eating, um, you can leave behind all these items. And then when it becomes time for dessert, all you have to do is add in your pies and anything that's refrigerated and you already have a cute display. I also use some yogurt covered raisins, some dried pineapples, some yogurt covered pretzels, mixed nuts, and as much assortment as I could possibly find to make sure that I had all the options. I even got some malt balls. These are so, so good, and I found that they made a really great addition. Here you can see some dried bananas. Um, I got some of those pirouette cookies that are just rolled with chocolate. They're so, so yummy. So excited for you guys to try this at home. Now for the fun part, we get to assemble everything. So I start off with my dips. I have buffalo chicken dip as well as spinach dip. And to make it look fancy, I just popped it in a bread bowl that was uncut from Publix. Now I'm also going to add in some sweet peppers. I think this makes a great little addition for not only color and visual purposes, but also for flavor. I have a mound of fruit, as you can see here, and I pull out some cheeses and basically everything that's needed at this point. And I'm going to put foil over everything in the meantime, so that way we don't have to worry about any dust or flies while I'm assembling. I'm taking my goat cheese. This is definitely a fan favorite. You must have goat cheese and honey on your charcuterie. Otherwise, it's just not going to be complete. 
And what I do is I just grab a fork and I just get the remaining goat cheese out there. It's okay if it's messy and crumbly. That's totally fine because you have tons of cheeses that you've elegantly cut that are going to make your charcuterie look nice, neat, and tight. But it's okay to have some messy cheeses as well. So I'm basically pulling out all the fruit at this point. This I've decided this is going to be the fruit platter. So you'll see me here stacking the melon. Um, and, and I do try different things. So whenever you're assembling, you just wanna keep in mind colors, textures, and you want variety. So sometimes it's trial and error and you have to see what's gonna look good and where things are gonna go. So you'll see me here hold up some grapes and see if it looks good. I don't think it looks good because the bunch was too big. So we switched the plan and we are assembling a different way. Um, now we're just dumping the cantaloupe on there. There's really no perfect way to do that. Um, I love the way it looks just kind of thrown there. Um, what I love with the honey, now I always like to make sure that my honey has a honeycomb. I love to put that honeycomb right on top or next to the goat cheese and the goat cheese is drizzled with excess honey as well. And I will leave the jar there with a spoon so if anybody wants to drizzle it over anything else, they'll be able to. This is definitely one of my favorite treats on the board and it's the simplest thing you could ever do. Now I'm pulling out more items and just finishing up this fruit board. I'm going to add in some more berries and then I'm going to get this covered in foil and move on to the next portion of my table. And you can see here, I have tons and tons of fruit left over and that's because it's gonna be incorporated throughout the entire charcuterie. Now I'm just opening up my hummus. I bought two different flavors. Um, it was BOGO, so that's always a good deal. Wherever you guys can save, I always recommend saving. And it's always nice to have variety. So BOGOs are my favorite. I've placed the hummus over by the other dips and I'm now gonna start on the cheese board. I use this bar butter garlic cheese. It is so delicious. And I just put a little cheese knife in there um, so people can serve themselves. And now I'm just fanning out the cheese that I pre-cut and just setting it up to make it look nice and elegant. Again, variety, texture, shape, size, that's what's going to give the most interest to your charcuterie. And you'll see how I come back in here and I incorporate the different fruits and cheeses and meats and I just fill any empty gaps. That's like my biggest tip for you guys is filling all the gaps on your board and that's what's going to make things look extra fancy. Don't be afraid to switch things up if you're not completely satisfied with the way you've laid something out. You can see here I'm reshuffling the smoked Gouda just to make it look the way that I want it to look. You can also um, use the cheeses in different ways. So here you can see that I've sliced some of the Colby Jack and I've also crumbled some big chunks. Again, this just adds texture and different sizes to your arrangement. And I really encourage you guys to enjoy this part. This is definitely the most rewarding part of all the work that you've put into this charcuterie. The assembly is the most fun. And what makes it great is when your family comes in and they are just shocked and awed at what you created for them. Now I'm taking some cracked pepper salami and I'm just folding it in half and lining it up neatly next to the cheeses. Sam's Club is a really great place for anyone making a charcuterie this meat pack here had literally like six different kinds of meats all in one and it was absolutely perfect and sliced all different sizes and it just worked out great so i just incorporated a little bit of each and we still have tons left over now i'm just incorporating the peppers and i'm just filling them in don't be afraid to put fruit and vegetables directly onto the clean fabric it's totally fine as long as it's not going to leak or give any juice then you are totally good to incorporate that however you'd like obviously you want to keep the things that have juices on the cutting board or in bowls of their own now i'm going to jump over to the next board and i have some soft cheeses here this is a borson garlic and herb cheese definitely highly recommend that it was totally a fan favorite now i'm taking some sun-dried tomatoes just sticking those on there and the biggest thing is just adding texture and color now i'm just folding over some soprasat that we picked up from the deli and we had it thinly sliced and basically just doing a loose roll on this i'm going to scooch this over next to the pepperoni and you just wanna keep in mind to add some different color and textures to break things up. So you can see here, I just popped in some strawberries and grapes just to add some more color variety to this palette. 
Now we took some sweet deli ham and we had it thick cut, as you can see here, and it's just folded over. I'm telling you, this is the perfect way to serve ham. I've never had it cut this thick, but it is totally worth it, totally delicious, and it makes the perfect texture for something that you're just eating by hand. And now I'm adding in the prosciutto. This is definitely a fan favorite of the charcuterie. It's fancy, it's elegant, it's delicious. And what I do is I actually just tear it into little bite-sized pieces because the prosciutto usually comes in slices and it could be a little bit much if you have too much of it in your mouth. And if you've had this before, you kind of know what I mean. So I prefer to have it in little thin slices. It not only stretches your prosciutto, which is a little bit more pricey, but it makes it the perfect bite size. So if you're going to pair it with a grape or a piece of cheese or a piece of cantaloupe, it is the perfect size, the perfect ratio um, to mix with something else. And then you'll just see me here doing the same thing, incorporating the berries, the fruit, to separate everything out. And now I'm taking some pepperoni and just filling in the gaps. And don't forget your crackers. We do need to leave some room for those. This year I decided to add cherries to the spread. Last year I did not have cherries in our display. Now, if you haven't seen last year's video, it was my first time making a huge charcuterie table like this. And it was much more simple. And I would love your feedback to tell me what you think between that video and this one. This one I really wanted to make sure that you guys could see everything up close and the quality was better for you and the tips were helpful as well. So if you haven't seen that one, I will go ahead and put the link in my description and you can let me know what you think. Now I'm gonna get started on my bread platter. I went ahead and I ordered French bread and Cuban bread from Publix and had them pre-slice everything for me. So that way all the slices are uniform and it saves on time. Now I'm going to grab some of my crackers and start distributing them all over the platters. Um, this is definitely the easiest part of the whole assembly because you're basically just filling in the gaps with different crackers. And you can see here, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You just see an empty hole, you just fill it with some crackers. Now jumping back to my bread platter, I am just adding in some little crackers and hummus to the platter so that way everything is together and there are no gaps on the platter. Last but not least, I'm putting out the warm brie with the cranberry topping as well as some prosciutto wrapped asparagus with a balsamic glaze that my husband made for us. I'm also going to put out some candied bacon and I will show you how bacon I made that Candied real quick. bacon. I have the fully cooked bacon and I am lining a baking sheet with it. Sprinkling with brown sugar. I like mine sweet, but you can put as much or as little sugar as you'd like. I'm adding fresh ground black pepper. Bit that little bit of oomph. At 375, placing it on the top rack. Actually only took five minutes in the oven on 375. It's nice and crunchy and delicious. Enjoy. Lastly, I cut up some figs and just randomly placed them throughout the platter. And here it is. Please, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure that you click that subscribe button. And I will continue to push out videos like this if you really love it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you try to recreate it at home. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Thanks again for watching. See you later. Bye. All right, so we got yogurt covered raisins, yogurt covered pretzels. We have uh, dried pineapple, um, garlic stuffed olives. We got a lot of dessert mixture in with the cheese. 
We got the fruit platter, watermelon, pineapple, cantaloupe, blueberries, strawberries, figs, honeycomb with uh, goat cheese, Ferrero Rocher, lint truffles, Kobe cheese, smoked Gouda, smoked Gruyere, butter cheese, crackers, peppers, mixed nuts, malt balls, ham, uh, sopressata, uh, we have what do we have here pepperoni we've got a cheese log we got uh, we got cherries we got grapes we got brie we got cranberry sauce we got spinach dip we got buffalo dip we got hummus roasted red pepper and sun-dried tomato and then we have prosciutto wrapped asparagus and this is the prosciutto once again thank you guys so so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe